Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss the origin of the graph theory and some basic definitions of graph theory. First look, some real life problems where we see the existence of graphs. Road networks of cities, railway networks of cities, networks of electricity distribution, networks of water pipelines in cities. And there are so many networks where we see the existence of graph theory. So many real life problems can be converted into graph theory and we can find the solution also. Now look at this network of uh, roads among cities. For example, these are various cities. You can name these cities. For example, A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So these are various cities. So if there is a road between two, cit uh, two cities, then you can uh, join these two cities with the help of straight line. So that's why you form a network of these cities. So if suppose the distance of two cities is given to you and for example, if you have to move to A and C, it means now there are more than one ways to move from A to C. For example, you can move from A, B, C or directly A, C or A, G and C. So one of the problems may be what would be the shortest path uh, from uh, if you move, wish to move from A to C. So we can convert this problem into a problem of graph theory and we can find the solution also. So we will discuss all these things later on. Now first we will discuss the origin of the graph theory. So the origin of the graph theory was the Konigsberg bridge problem. This Konigsberg uh, was a Prussian city now right now in Russia. Look at this, in this city, uh, Prezel river was there. This river split it in such a way that two Icelands, I and J were formed. A and B were the two river banks. Now the problem was to find a walk through the town in such a way as to traverse each bridge exactly once. So in, in 1736, Leonhard Euler, a Swiss mathematician, came out with the solution in terms of graph theory. So first he converted this problem into graph theory. Then he discussed the solution of this problem. So first look at this, how he converted this problem into the problem of graph theory. What he did, he represented these places A, I, J, B with dots and these bridges, seven bridges were there and he represented these seven bridges with the help of faces. So this problem, this figure is represented in the form of graph theory in this way. He discussed some, he defined some terms and he gave theorems. On the base of these theorems, he proved that it is, it was not possible to find a walk through seven bridges traveling each bridge exactly one time. So we will discuss all these terms and theorems later on. Now, let us start with the basic definitions of graph. A graph consists of a set of vertices and a set of edges. We denote it by Z, V, where V is the set of vertices and E is the set of edges. Now, for example, look at this is a graph G, V. We can give assign name to these points, suppose A, B, C, D, E and F. For edges, you can write it E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6 and E. Seven. The set of vertices, look at this V, you can write it V equal to A, B, C, D, E and F and similarly we can write E equal to E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6 and E7. Okay. So in this way you can define the set of vertices and set of edges. So this is the graph G, V having the set of vertices V and set of vertices, set of edges. Now look at this, each edge is associated with an unordered pair of vertices. For example, take the, uh, look at this E1. You can write it A, B or B, A because no direction is given to you. That's why you can represent it either in the form of AB or in the form of B. So this, that's why we are saying each edge is associated with an unordered pair of vertices. So in this way you can represent a graph. Here if you look at this, how many elements are there in V? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So cardinality of V is 6 and cardinality of E is 7. Now some other definitions in graph theory. First we give the name A, B, C, D, E and F. For example, as is E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6 and E7. 
7. Now the order of the graph. Order of the graph is the number of vertices in the graph. If you go back, the number of vertices here equal to 6. That's why you can write it. The order of the graph is 6. 6 vertices are there. Size of the graph, number of edges. This is basically the cardinality of E. The cardinality is 7 here. So you can write it 7. Now self loop an edge with the same end vertices. An edge whose end vertices are same. E7. You can write it E say you can write E7 H C comma C. So end vertices are same. That's why E7 is a self loop. Here you can write the example of this is E7. Parallel edges. Two edges are set to be parallel if the end vertices of two edges are same. For example, E4 and E5. Look at this, the end vertices are same. Adjacent vertices. Vertices having an edge between them. If uh, for two vertices there is an edge between them, then you will say that the two vertices are adjacent. For example, D and E. Look at this. There is an edge between the two vertices. So D is adjacent to E. Similarly, you can say D is adjacent to C. D is adjacent to B. B is adjacent to A. B is adjacent to C. So in this way, you can define adjacent vertices. Adjacent edges. Two non-parallel edges having a common end vertex. Non-parallel edges. It means, for example, look at this E5 and E6. We can write it E5 as D and uh, e6 edge b d so one vertex d is common here look at this one vertex is common so e6 is adjacent to e5 or you can write e5 is adjacent to e4 similarly you can say e1 is adjacent to e2 e1 is adjacent to e6 in this way you can uh, write another example also so these are adjacent edges degree of a vertex the number of edges incident on a vertex number of edges incident on the vertex remember one thing if we self loop is there then we will count it to one in this way one in this way for the degree of this vertex we will count a self loop at, uh, as two edges are there in, because we are talking about the incident on a number of incident on a vertex here this is incident from this side this is from this side so we will count it two so degree of a vertex number of edges incident on a vertex for example the degree of e you can write if degree of d e is d degree of e so two edges are there e4 and e5 that incident on e so degree of e is you two similarly if you write degree of c as i told you we will count a self loop twice so one two three and four so degree of c equal to four degree of f if i say degree of f degree of f this equal to 0 because no edge instant on this vertex one another term is there which i forgot to mention this is an isolated vertex isolated isolated vertex a vertex is said to be isolated if there is no edge instant on that vertex for example f f is here isolated vertex because no edge is there uh, such the no edge is there uh, which incident on this vertex f so f is isolated vertex okay further one pendant vertex pendant vertex if the degree of a vertex is 1 then we say vertex is pendant vertex for example look at this a the degree of a degree of a is degree of a is 1 so we will say a you can define a as a pendant vertex isolated vertex means no edge instant on that vertex pendant means only one edge instant on a so these are some basic definitions which we will use further for defining various theorems and finding rejects so i hope that you got the concept of graph and further you can Utilize all these concepts which I have defined here in studying all these theorems and related.